Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some spring bird bookends. I found this set of bookends at the thrift store. I thought that they were a little bit quirky, not quite my style, but they definitely had great bones. Definitely something that I could give a makeover more to my style. But first I had to remove the little cat sitting on top of the book. So I sort of just used a hammer and a screwdriver, sort of like a chisel. And then I used the end of my hammer to pry that cat off. And I did the same thing with the sun. To replace the cats, I'm going to be using these little ceramic birds. They are something that I carry in my shop and I felt like the scale was perfect and these are perfect for Easter and spring decoration. To prime these birds, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's 2-in-1 Primer in white and I'm applying it to each of the birds with a sponge and I'll be doing two coats. While my birds are drying, I'm going to focus on the books themselves and I'm going to give the area where the cat used to sit a bit of a sand to try and make it as even as possible. I'm then going to take Paint Couture's embossing medium and using a palette knife, I'm going to lay down a thin layer to try and even out the surface. You could definitely use some sort of spackle filler for this step. I picked this because I had it on hand and also it tends to dry a little bit quicker than filler would. When the embossing medium is dry, I'm going to take that two-in-one primer again and I am going to coat the entire book, both the left and right bookends, with this primer. This is going to seal in and ensure that I won't get any bleed through and it will also make sure that my paint sticks well. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and most of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. When the primer is dry, I'm going to use a combination of Gorilla Super Glue and hot glue on the base of each of my birds to attach it to the book stacks. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Primitive Mold. I'm going to be dusting certain designs with cornstarch and then I'm going to work my dust air dry clay into those designs. I'm going to be making quite a few of these, repeating a lot of these designs. Basically, I want it to look like my birds are sitting on a bed or a nest of flowers and leaves. So I definitely had to create quite a few of these castings. Don't worry, I didn't make you sit through me doing them all. So you're just going to see me make one of each of the designs that I'm going to be using. So I've made a lot of those leaf designs. Now I'm going to make a couple of those flowers. And I also took IOD's Village Market Mold and I'm just working it into the florals in that design. I'm then working some clay into these smaller flower designs that I found online. I'll be sure to link them. I always think it's a good idea to have a bit of variation in size when you're putting together your molds. I also used this sort of medium size mold here. This has a lot of different style flowers. So I did cast quite a few different designs again to have that variety. I'm also going to be casting a few of the leaf designs from this mold. There is a smaller design and a larger design. And then I'm going to use my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue to start attaching my casting. So at this point, I'm just adding that village market mold around the base of the bird. And once that's secure, I'm then going to start adding some of the greenery from the primitive mold. And you can see I'm sort of draping that greenery over the book so it's sort of spilling over the edge. I'm also layering in some of those leaves that we cast as well. So you can see that I'm gluing down a lot of the leaf designs first and then I'll be coming in with the florals that we cast before. So just layering those flowers and I'm also sort of folding and bending and manipulating this flower so it looks like the bird is sitting on them. I just wanted to give this a little bit of a lifelike appearance, make it look a little bit more natural, like maybe the bird had collected the florals and made a nest for themselves. 
If you're going to try this, obviously it will be up to you as to how many flowers you add. I just really wanted to give you an idea of how I laid out my different designs. I also put this larger leaf design in the back section from the primitive mold and I also added the smaller flowers from that mold as well. Next, I did cast a couple of these little berries. I tried to do a few different sizes and I just sort of scattered them about. I did definitely have to condense this video. It would have been quite a long one if I didn't condense it. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell from the photos at the end how it all came together. And I did do a very similar design on the other bookend. After laying out all of my florals and greenery, I decided to cast the larger bow from this design and I just felt like this sort of really tied everything together and it gave it a bit more of a French sort of shabby chic look. So I've cast that one and I'm going to add some glue to the back and then position it hanging off the edge. I also wanted it to look like some of the greenery had fallen over the edge. So I've taken this leaf and I'm actually bending this design and manipulating it a little bit to make it look like it's fallen and sort of maybe started to dry a little bit in the corner there. And I also added a couple of leaves and some flowers. So I'm just experimenting with how I can bend and sort of manipulate these castings to a point. On the other bookend design, you can see I also added a sort of curled up little leaf design on the edge there and a couple of other leaves and also some florals. I definitely just had a bit of a play. I wanted it to definitely feel a little bit more natural, like things had fallen down off the top. I let my castings dry overnight and the next day this is what we have so far. You can see the bird is set, sitting on a bed of florals and greenery. They are pretty similar in design. Obviously the position of each of the florals and greenery are not going to be exactly the same. And then coming in with Paint Couture's Peace Mineral Paint, I'm going to go over just the book sections. It doesn't matter if I go a little bit over the greenery and florals that we added because obviously I am going to be going over the top of those with some colors, but I just really wanted to get this base down first. And it's going to take two coats of this color to get the coverage that I want. So I'm making sure that I'm not going too much over the sections where the book pages are, but I do want the sort of border of the book the book covers, I should say, I obviously want to have some of that tone on those sections. Once my two coats of paint were dry, I took Paint Couture's Basil Chalk Paint. I'm taking a little bit out of the container, putting it onto a palette, and then I'm also going to take uh, Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Chalk Paint, and I just want to lighten up that paint. I want a couple of different tones of green to work with. So I'm going to take the lighter color green, and I'm going to go over the top of the flat leaves that we added and add that lighter green tone. On the other greenery that we added, I did take the lid of the basil chalk paint and I decided to come in with that tone again just to create some variety and contrast. Obviously leaves in real life are not going to all be the same green tone. So I'm just gonna work my way around my molds, adding those different tones of green. And obviously whatever I do on this bookend, I am going to repeat on the other side.
Once all my greenery was painted, I took Paint Couture's Rose Gold Luxe Metallic Paint and I am going to focus on the little rose castings that I added. You can see I'm working that paint into the design. And then once I'm happy with the coverage of the rose gold, I did then come in with Paint Couture's Oyster Pearl Luxe Metallic Paint just to add a little bit of tonal variation. Obviously, it's going to lighten up certain areas. After adding the same color combination on each of the rose designs, I took Paint Couture's Ballet Slipper Luxe Metallic Paint and I'm adding it to the other florals there with the larger petals. This is such a beautiful baby pink. It is so shiny, just definitely one of my new favorites to be using for Easter and spring crafts and definitely Valentine's Day too. Next, I'm going to take some of Paint Couture's Queen's Court Mineral Paint and I'm going to put a little bit of that out on my palette and also adding some of the Oyster Pearl Metallic Paint to give this a little bit of a subtle shine. And I'm just going to work that into the designs there from the Primitive Mold. And again, I wanted to add some of the metallics to my design as I love the hint of shine that it gives, so even though I'm going to be layering other products over the top, you're still going to be able to see that lovely shine. It just definitely gives your project a little bit of something special. So I'm just going to continue to work my way around and I'm adding that Queen's Court to the other florals that I have on my bookends, also including those little smaller florals that I added. I'm also adding it to the little berries that we glued down. Once my paint is completely dry, I'm going to take some of that farmhouse linen. I am pulling off the excess and now I'm doing some dry brushing over the top of the paint that we've just put down. I want this to have an aged, faded, sort of dusty look to it. So I'm just going to work my way around adding that dry brushing to my florals and greenery. We're also going to be laying that same paint down over the top of the book itself. But for now, I'm just adding that until I'm happy with the look of it. It did take a couple of coats before I was happy with how it looked. For the actual book sections, I did go in a little bit heavier with that paint. Ultimately, I want the piece paint that we added first to be an undertone. I want that to help give the appearance of age. So we're really going in and layering the, those colors over the top of it. So I'm going to keep working that paint into those details. You can see it's skipping over some of the texture. Again, this is going to add to the age and it did actually end up taking two coats for me to be happy with the way that it looked. I'm also adding two coats of the same farmhouse linen white paint to our little bird. You can see here on the second coat over the books, it really starts to all tie together. The tones start to work nicely. I definitely still feel that that piece tone underneath was necessary. It just adds to that aged layered look. Next, I'm coming in with Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze, and I'm just adding a little bit to the center of each of the flowers. And after I've added it, I do use a wet wipe and also sometimes just my finger just to tone that down a little bit and bring a little bit of that white back underneath. Again, it just makes it look a little bit more realistic when you have that tonal variation. When the glaze was dry, I took Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in satin top coat and I am going to seal the entire project except for our bird. 
If I've inspired you to try any of these paint couture products, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. You will find the link in the description and I will put it on the screen. I just get a little thank you from paint couture in return. Once my top coat is dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Crackle Step 1 and I'm going to be applying it to the bird. I'm applying it in a dabbing motion. I'm building up that product. I'm adding it in this way so that I get more authentic looking crackle as opposed to just brushing it on. Sometimes you can get the alligator crackle, which doesn't look as great. I'm also adding a little bit to the book themselves in a few random areas. Once step one is dry and sticky to the touch, I'm coming in with step two and applying it in the same dabbing motion. I'm being careful though not to be too rough so that I don't disturb that step one. When I'm finished applying it back over the same sections that I applied it in step one, I'm going to let this crackle medium dry for several hours. Next, I'm going to use Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to add it over my bird first. And you can see that as soon as I start adding this, you can see the beautiful crackle that we've managed to achieve. I'm going to work in sections and then I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe back some of the excess so that it stays mainly in the cracks. Obviously, I do want a bit of a vintage look for this project, so I am still going to allow it to tone my paint and give my paint an antiqued look but we do want it darker in those cracks Once I'm finished adding the glaze and wiping it away from the bird, I'm going to move my attention to the book itself. You can see that I'm adding it to the section of the book there where I've added some crackle. I'm applying it and then wiping it away. I'm also going to work that glaze into the sections where the book pages are. I feel like this definitely helps it look like old worn book pages. So I'm not going to wipe back as much from those sections. And I'm also adding it obviously to the rest of the book sections. As I said, I'm definitely going for a vintage sort of French shabby look here, but if this was a little bit too much for you, it was a bit too grungy, you could obviously leave the glazing step out, just do it maybe on the bird and then leave it at that. But I definitely love how this is completely transforming this piece. It's making it look old world. It's definitely one of my favorite looks. I'm also going to be working that glaze into the flowers. I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe it back. And at times I am also going to be using my mister to water down that glaze. I want these to almost look like dried flowers in some ways. So the glaze is definitely going to help with that effect. If you don't have access to this particular product, you could create a brown paint wash with some brown water-based paint, or you could use a brown wax or a black wax. It just depends on what look you're after and what products you have. Once my glaze is completely dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to apply it with a small artist brush to the little bow that we added before. I don't mind if I don't get full coverage here, it will just add to that weathered look. Music 
After applying it to the bow, I'm going to be applying a little bit of it to the center of each of our flowers. Just a subtle hint of that beautiful bronze. I'm then also going to add the bronze to the pages of the books. I always love those books that have the gold gilding on the edges. And then I'm also adding it to the indented sections. I think these were carved into these little wooden pieces. I'm just going to add those as well. I also then added some of that bronze to our little bird's beak. Now, obviously, I'm going to be repeating the same steps on our other bookend. Next, I'm going to add that Ballet Slipper Luxe Metallic Paint. I've just got a little bit on my finger and I'm going to run it just over the edge of our pink flowers just to bring back a little bit more of that metallic. Finally, I'm also going to take some of the Oyster Pearl Luxe Metallic Paint. I have a little bit on my finger and I'm just going to go over the top of some of the leaves. And here are our finished Spring Bird Bookends. I'm so happy with how these turned out. I feel like now they're definitely a little bit French, a little bit shabby chic, definitely better than they were with the cats on it. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.